85% of our known universe is completely invisible. All of the matter that we see in our known universe accounts for 25% of the total gravitational force in effect. A whole 85% of all gravity comes from some kind of source that we cannot see or detect in any way at all. 85%. This comes from something we are completely and absolutely clueless about. We call it dark matter. Dark in the sense that we cannot see it, and dark in the sense that it eludes any possible way of detection bar that of the gravitational influence it has due to its mass. This only allows us to infer that there is something actually there. It's like seeing a laser beam and inferring that at the end of the laser beam is some kind of device that emits it, yet we look and there's nothing there the laser just appears. We know that something is emitting it, but we can't see it. We can only see the effect of it. As is with dark matter, we can only see or study its gravity, but we can't see what's causing it. There is no causality, only effect. Dark matter was discovered by Swiss astrophysicist Fritz Zwicky. He was studying the coma cluster, which is a cluster of around a thousand galaxies, and he noted that for some reason the galaxies were travelling far too fast to have a stable gravitational existence in the cluster. In terms of the gravitational field generated solely by the matter of the galaxies themselves, they should have surely flown way apart from one another many, many years ago, and there should not be any cluster to study in the first place. Yet there was something there holding them together. He didn't know what, all he knew there was something. He could study the cause to the effect that he was seeing, but he could not see it, because only the effect could be seen, as is with the laser that we spoke about earlier. Zwicky could see the laser, but not the pointer. He could see the gravity, but not the mass, not the matter. A whole 50 years later, the idea of dark matter was finally accepted and became a full, legitimate field of scientific research. Sometime later, in 1987, Dr Virginia Trimble published the notion that dark matter may simply be its namesake, matter, mass, that does not interact with electromagnetic energy, i.e. light, x-rays or any other kind of electromagnetic wave. Something that does not absorb nor emit electromagnetic radiation and has mass is completely impossible to detect apart from its gravitational influence. Some believe that dark matter is a completely different set of particles that reserve the property of not interacting with radiation. Others believe it is the highlight of error in our knowledge of gravity. Many others believe that the particle of gravity, the graviton, a hypothetical, elementary, force-carrying particle of gravity that is passed between atoms to provide their influence on one another are interdimensional particles. This means that they can flick between one dimension to another and therefore one universe to another just as easily as you step away from your house into the street. This, along with the idea of brain cosmology, i.e. multiple universes existing on separate higher dimensional planes, or brains, and of course on the notion that if electromagnetic radiation, or the photon, was not an interdimensional and therefore interversal, that is the travelling between universes, or should we say verses, then the gravity of mass could travel or leak between universes, yet the light could not. This means, in a close universe that is 85% more massive than ours, intelligent beings may be pondering why 25% of their universe is made of dark matter and they cannot detect it, while we sit looking at their 85% pondering why that part of our universe cannot be detected. Maybe there's a scientific study, a space station if you will, orbiting around a small spot of gravity. There's intelligent beings wondering why there's an Earth-sized attraction force with no matter there to generate it. They may be studying Earth in a universe where Earth does not exist.